we've, we've had a We're lot okay. of people endorse that. <laughs> you have? Yes. Well, I'll see if I can keep the keep it going. Good job. It'll be good. <laughs> Shoot. All right, so your character is obviously as uh, cunning and manipulative as ever. Uh, how is that going to continue going into the new season? Um, it'll be interesting because I personally don't want to know. <laughs> Uh, and I've, the writers know that I'm one of the, f the few members of the, the team who don't like to know what's happening in the future because I, I like to play things as they happen. I like to be surprised and also to... I'm a big fan of the genre, so when I read the scripts and I'm like, you're kidding me. And my, my husband Scott will be like, what, 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 what? I'm like, oh, no. I'm not telling you. You're going to just have to watch it. So that's why I don't really like to know far in advance. Also, I think it makes you play something differently if you know the outcome before you've actually played it. Um, however, I do know that he's going to be even more evil and bad you know as badass than what he was and also you know I can say this because Mark said it in the last uh, inner interview that we did there will be magic involved because I am the magician right and also that the League of Assassins which I am <laughs> the leader of <laughs> It's not much of a fanboy. I made the, had them make me my own demon's head <laughs> ring. I was wearing it yesterday when I spoke to you, and you did, and you. I saw you glimpse at it, and I'm like, no one has noticed yet. I've been wearing it for a week, <laughs> so that everyone. And actually, some fans outside, like I was in the supermarket, and this guy came up to me and he went, "Dude, Raz Al Ghul, you are you are a mean son of a bitch." And he went, "Oh my God, you really are him. You got the ring." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so get out of the frozen food aisle <laughs> and don't touch that fish. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, you play him so well, is it affecting your personal relationships? Are people believing that perhaps you are that manipulative in I, I would love to, I, I think it's funny because I am really probably, complete, I am completely opposite to who Malcolm is. But we all have a mean streak in us, so it's nice to bring that out. But uh, uh, I think that the best compliment people give me is they come up to me literally, literally in the street or in, at, the, at the cons and stuff and say, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they pause and they go, but I love you so much. And that to me, that is the best, you know, kind of criti critique you can give me. I love you, but I hate you. Or I hate you, but I love you, either way. So I'm, it, does, it hasn't really affected me personally. I've always stood up for myself, <laughs> put it that way. Awesome. I just probably wouldn't kill anybody. Sweet. Can I get Knuckles with the ring? Boop. One of the, one of the reasons Knuckles fascinating is because, you know, we have... Oh, you just jumped right in there. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. You go ahead. You, go ahead. you go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to. Go no, go, go, Please. go. Oh, I was just going to talk about the sorry. relationship between Oliver and Merlin and how there was kind of an unstable kind of trust. Yep. And then it looked like you totally threw him under the bus. And then it all was okay. And then there's a deal. That might so, have all been planned. Yeah. So I'm wondering kind of the relationship going forward. Are you going to be, you know, is um, Roz Merlin going to be the badass for everyone and him and Oliver still have a truce? Or is it back to, is the deal done? And What I would like to see, and again, what I don't know is going to happen, I would like to see that, and obviously because Oliver took Malcolm in and they, they, they have this earthquakey trust with each other, right, <laughs> of they're going to help. And, and I was taken under the wing of the team and introduced more to the team. And also, um, how I think that that it would only be right if if Malcolm, as Roz, takes them under the wing of the lead. How that's done, I don't know. But when I said dress down Fridays for the league, does that mean that the league <laughs> does that? It's not like everyone's going to be romping naked in the hot tub, you know? <laughs> does that mean that the league are going to be infiltrating the city? as normal people and no one knows they're there? I don't know. But the I, I, I think there will be a, an ongoing trust with the team and Malcolm, but if push comes to shove, someone's going to get shoved and someone's going to get pushed because it was clear and it was clearly spelled out when uh, um, uh, Laurel, in the last big battle sequence we had, when I saved her and she turned to me and she went, I wouldn't have done it for you. Thank you, but I wouldn't have done it for you. So 
he knows where he stands and he's got to watch his own back but he will also he has a so I say this I say this as the actor the reason that makes it work so well with the team and myself and there's a soft spot for all of them as Malcolm and for maybe because of Tommy's connection maybe it's because of with Oliver because he's always looked at Oliver as being a son whatever it is I've yet to figure that out but me as a Malcolm, he has a soft spot for all of them. He'd still kill them if he had to, but he will he'll watch out for them. As he's watching his back, is uh, is Mrs. sort of the, the person he needs to watch the most? So glad you asked. Can we that. talk about that relationship? I can I can't really much, but what I will say is I want I hope they explore that greatly because it's going to be a really interesting dynamic <laughs> between Malcolm and Nissa because of the past. You know, her father could be dead. We don't know because <laughs> the body just disappeared, right? Um, so that's another thing that he has to fear. Or will she look to Malcolm as being a father figure? Because he's the head of the league, she has to respect him. It'll be interesting to see their training sequences. I have one more. They're insane. Anyone? Can I ask, uh, being associated with this and Doctor Who, is it overwhelming to be a Comic Con? Like, is, can you take one step out of here and not be mom? I, I can't. Well, yes and no. I've been coming here for nine, ten years, and I love it. And I've been coming under a different uh, auspice or, or a different uh, show each time, or a different guise each time I've come. And I do get. Stephen and I, when we were walking home last night, we got mobbed coming into the hotel. I've been mobbed when I came in to check in. I'm, but what fans, and I really love this and I appreciate it, because it's allowed me still to have part of the old John, the nerd, they let me walk the floor. Fans will, and they'll pass, they're like, hey John, because they've known I've done this long enough and I've talked about it, they let me walk the floor to enjoy the con like the, the fan that I am. And, you know, they'll still ask for photographs, but they won't let me do that on the floor. So I get the best of both worlds. I get mobbed and get to feel like I'm the most loved person in the world. <laughs> and also I get ignored and to feel like I'm just like everybody else. And it's wonderful. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you.